All right. I, I hope everybody is sharing the same super stoke that I am today. Uh, welcome to another Headless uh, Events hosted by yours truly. I'm Fran Agolto, who do, don't, for those of you who don't know me, I think everybody in the, in the, on the event live uh, da, uh, does. I'm on the Headless DevRel team at WP Engine. And I'm excited because my co host today is my main man mentor friend Blake Wilson. Blake Wilson is on the uh, team Merlin, which maintains uh, core Faust JS, the open source framework for headless WordPress. Uh, so uh, Blake, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Good to see you all. Uh, Mark, I think you're the one I've ever, I don't think I've met before. So hey, Mark, but good to see the rest of y'all. Uh, this will be fun. Awesome. So uh, let me just get people coming in real quick. Oh, cool. Lexi's here. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to um, start off just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, etiquette alert. Please be excellent to each other. This is being recorded and we do upload this into our YouTube channel uh, for people that can't attend and uh, might miss it. So please be kind also to all shared demo resources and don't, don't DDoS my WordPress uh, endpoint. Thanks. Um, so today, today's Today's agenda is uh, what I'm going to go over. What is the app router uh, and the new paradigm shift in Next 13? Going to go over default React server components versus the old Next.js 12 client components for those of you who uh, have used Next in the past. The data fetching met methods in Next 13. And then Blake will pop open some code and I, I will share a little bit of mine too as well. Um, so to get started here, so the app router and the new paradigm. So the new app directory all is used to, is used now to house all of your pages and components instead of the old pages directory. It is inside this app directory that you can make client components and server components in the old pages directory. For those of you that have used next 12 and previous versions, you would be in the um, you would be using only client side components as the standard. In the new app directory, it, it utilizes server components by default. Now the routes and pages structure are also different in the new app router. The routes that reflect in the URL are folders instead of files, which was the standard in the old pages directory. Now within these folders, which are called your route segments, if you will. You can create your page components, which are files that you would want to be rendered on the browser. There is a new routing convention as well in relation to files. For example, any page you would want rendered on the browser would be named page. Duh. And then <laughs> page.js, jsx, or .tsx if you're using TypeScript. Uh, when you need a dynamic route segment, you similarly would use the bracket syntax. Okay, except in this case, you wrap the folder instead of the file in the brackets. And then if you wanted to have a folder that does not reflect in your URL path, you would wrap that folder in parentheses. Um, and we'll see this, um, we'll demonstrate this during uh, when we pull up the code in the demo. Okay, server components by default. So in pre previous versions of Next, all React components that you created were client components. You had to ship additional JavaScript to the browser to be hydrated and run in the browser for any interactivity. Now, in Next 13, we now have access to server components by default. Server components live on and are fully rendered on the server. They do not need to be hydrated in the browser. The overall size of the JavaScript bundle is much less, leading to better performance. Now, you do need client components, y'all, for interactivity still, right? But for components that do not need that, you would use server components to reduce that JS bundle size and increase that performance on the client. Now, just to go over, y'all, some things you would use them for would be like fetching data and showing that data in components. Or say you need to use sensitive info like API keys and access tokens, using server components would hide them from the front end. And then you could also use them for like large dependencies for components to then reduce the amount of the client side JavaScript. Now, you would still need to use client components when you have to manage like, you know, state, uh, client effects, client router, or interactive events like click events. 
Uh, this means that essentially from like a thought perspective, um, when you're thinking about using Next 13 as a developer, you're just going to need to think a little bit more of how you structure your application and figure out which components need to be server and which need to be client. All right, lastly, before we get into uh, demo time, data fetching real quick in previous versions of Next had special functions, as you guys know, like get server side props for that real time data and then the get static props for cached data. Next 13 has removed these and replaced them with fetching formats built on top of the native fetch API. I'll have some links at the end where I actually don't use any um, uh, helper libraries for uh, using fetch. It's going to be raw fetch um, that I used in an example. And then in this demo, we actually will be using Faust.js and the Apollo client support that is experimental, y'all, for Next 13, right, Blake? It's not that's it's still experimental, not stable, nothing like that. Yep, yeah. I mean, most of the stuff that we're talking about today is still uh, very experimental. So you could use it, but use it at your own risk. <laughs> you got that, guys. Use it at your own risk. Experimental. Okay. So it's demo time. All right, Blake. I'm going to hand the realms to you. Cool. I'm going to stop and sh stop sharing my screen. Perfect. Let me get turn. set up here. Well, thank you, Fran. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop up and share my screen. Well, let me know if you guys can't see that. So um, I've kind of got two windows open here. Here's just my VS code. I've got an example project here that is using um, App Router and then our new Faust App Router utilities. Um, real quick, if anyone wants to play along or check out some of this stuff afterwards, we've got a document on our faustjs.org site. So if you go to faustjs.org and search app router up here, nice. we've got a, um, a guide that's going to walk through pretty much everything we're walking through today. Um, the example project, all of our new utilities and stuff like that. So if you kind of want a condensed summary too of what we're talking about today, this might be a good um, kind of document to, to review after the call. Um, so yeah, I've got, I've pulled down our example project here and you can see that here in this directory. So I've got my app router project. It looks fairly similar to most traditional, uh, you know, Next apps, except you can see here instead of pages, we've get this this app directory here. So I'll give a quick little refresher of just app router and kind of the, some of the stuff that Fran talked about as well. So, um, you know, you can kind of think of it as before the pages router had um, a file based page that kind of reflected the URL. So if you go to slash my account, um, there's going to be you know, a page in your next app called my-count.tsx or jsx or whatever. Um, it's a little bit different here. So as Fran mentioned, it's more or less on the directory. Um, the directory is where the naming scheme for the URL comes from. So for example, here, I've got this my account folder and then in that a page.tsx. So this component here will actually render localhost 3000 slash my account. Um, the benefit of that is you kind of have multiple different pages that you that can be used to combine one UI. So you can see here we've got this layout.tsx file. Um, this is a new paradigm in App Router where you can wrap um, routes within multiple layouts. So you might have um, an utmost layout for your entire page that has your your HTML tags, your header tags, stuff like that. You might also have another layout for maybe your docs pages. So you might have a docs sidebar on all of your docs pages. You could have one layout component for that sidebar across all of your docs pages. So it is pretty helpful in keeping your, your code dry. You know, you only have one sidebar and it's kind of like automatically um, added there throughout the next page or the next app directory. Um, so just to give a little bit of a context in terms of this example project, um, for the most part, you've got everything the same as your Faust app. You got a Faust config here where you're defining stuff like your possible types, stuff like that, plugins. Um, next config is the same thing. We have one thing here called server actions. We're using these for um, login methods and logout methods. Uh, server actions are essentially a way that you can communicate with the next server from a client component. And we'll get into that in, a, in just a second here. Um, but let's just fire this up and jump right into a live demo. So. Um, I've got this running here locally just by running npm run dev. And if I pull up localhost 3000 here, I'll make this a bit bigger just so you all can see it easier. 
Um, and then, so this is the app router example. It's, I'm going to warn you guys, it's very bare bones. There's not a whole lot of styling <laughs> here, but it's kind of done intentionally just so you can kind of understand the, um, you know, the app router constructs, and then you can add on styling later. But um, you can see here, it says my WordPress site. This is my WordPress site, just another headless WordPress site. So this is my title and description in my WordPress site. I've got a WordPress menu here with my homepage and my account, and I've just got a basic post list here. So let's take a look in the code real quick and kind of see how this page is being constructed. Because like I said before, it's no longer one page like we had in Next Pages Router. It could be a combination of multiple. So if we take a look at the layout.tsx file, you can see here we're doing a few things. We're, um, we've got, we're getting our client. So this is a Faust construct to get our Apollo client. And you can see we're importing this from at FaustWP slash experimental app router. So that's kind of where all of our new utilities for app error stuff lives. Um, and you can see here, this is done asynchronously. So all clients or all components in app router are async, which is really helpful because now you can run these async await kind of processes that you couldn't do in, um, you know, client side components before, you know, before, if I wanted to await get client, I'd have to wrap it in a use effect and do all this state management. And it can kind of be a lot. Whereas with react server components in the app router, I can literally just call await get client and I'm, I'm good to go. I'm off to the races. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're kind of setting up a root layout. You can see we're executing a query here on the client to get general settings, our primary menu items, our footer menu items, and so on. And then we're rendering that throughout every single page. So you can see here, we've got our H1 tag for our title, our description, our menu items, and so on. And so no matter if I go to my login page or my post list page or whatever, it's going to show this component across all of those layouts. So again, just going back to that shared layout where I only have to do this once and it's kind of good to go across every single route. Um, also real quick too, if anyone has any questions or anything, feel free to um, add in the chat or um, shout something out and I can kind of help explain that as we're going through this. Like um, the, uh, just to, I just want to make sure because I sent a link to David. You're just using the boilerplate uh, boilerplate uh, package, right? That they can pull down from the docs because yep. I sent that in the. Okay, cool. That's what I. Yeah, thought. exactly. Yeah, great question. So um, this example project that I'm using right now, it might look a little bit different because I'm within our Faust mono repo. But if okay. you wanted to download this uh, example project yourself, <clears throat> if you go to this doc that we uh, talked about earlier. This command here is going to get you off to the races. So this will clone down the example project and you'll pretty much be seeing exactly what I'm seeing here. Um, and then, see. so let's see here. I see David's got a question here. Will those queries from each page get stitched together or will each fetch be its own request to graph GraphQL? Yeah, great question. So that's a good question. Yeah, that's kind of the, um, the balance here in app router. So <clears throat> um, as you can see here, there's no um, get static props, get server side props or anything like that. We're using just kind of like clients, which under the hood, Apollo uses fetch. Um, and so each request or each fetch request is what will be executed on the server. So nothing is getting stitched together. Um, Apollo in their experimental library, maybe they could do something like that. I don't think they're doing anything like that right now. Um, but as of right now, each request is its own request. The benefit of that is, is you can actually add in revalidate tags for specific fetches. So let's say you have a fetch request or a, or, or a query like this that gets your menu items. And you think, oh, well, my menu items, my title probably don't change as much as my WordPress content. So you can set a revalidate timer as a little bit longer than you traditionally would maybe on your post list or something like that. Um, so a little bit varying there, and we can kind of dig into that, the caching stuff a little bit um, later once we walk through all these pages. But um, I'd say that's one of the bigger things, bigger changes that is involved with the app router is there's a lot of new caching strategies, which are good. You just kind of have got to figure out the quirks and how to position yourself, like when you're making requests and, um, you know, how to best get that data without it being stale. Um, so you so could revalidate these things at the query and component level instead of an entire page. Is that right, Blake? Or? Yep. Yeah. So that's a great way to think of it, Fran. Like, I was like, not... yeah, I was trying to think in my, in my dev mind, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're not revalidating at the entire page level, more or less at each fetch request, you know? So if you think of a, 
yeah. a page. You got your docs sidebar that requests all your menu items. You might have your main page content. Those are two different requests, and those can be treated differently from the from its caching perspective. You know, the for example, the sidebar might not change as often. You can revalidate that less often if you feel the need to. Um, oh, wow. So this is kind of the homepage, and you can see here by our homepage at localhost three thousand. This is kind of what we just reviewed. So we have our menu, our title and description, but then we have our post list here. So let's take a look at what that looks like in our um, project here. So just page.tsx, that's the home page. It's not under any um, you know, directory path. So this just means that's the home page. And you can see here, it's pretty much exactly the same as what we saw in our root layout. We're awaiting get client, we're getting the client, we're making a fetch for certain data. In this case, we have got a query for posts and we're getting the ID, title, URI, and slug. And then we're just iterating over that like we would. And again, it's very nice. It's a bit of a change, but it's very nice to be able to do this async await stuff within React components because, you know, in the past, it's so tedious doing this with use effect and you've got to watch for state changes. And once the state, once the state changes are applied, you've got to, you know, make sure everything's hydrated properly. In here, you know, you async await, you're good. You got the data. You don't need any loading state here because it's all done on the server. And then at the end of it, all of that data is just returned as HTML. Um, you know, to the actual browser. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you can see here we get our post list. If I were to refresh this or even just view the source, um, it's minified here, so it's going to be a little weird to see, but you can see here, we can see, you know, just another headless WordPress site. We've got my account. We've got our whole post list here. So it's not serving a JavaScript bundle, you know, and then getting that data. There's no um, server side requests or, or client side requests rather. So if we look at the network tab here and do that again, so you can see here, nothing's really going on in terms of like fetch requests or SHR requests. It's all just being returned as HTML. So that's kind of the benefit of these rack server components. Oh. Um, so let's take a look. We'll just go to another one of these posts. You can see here, very basic, just test content, but these are being routed from the, um, slug directory here. So if you're familiar with the pages directory, you might see this slug in brackets as the actual file name. Again, um, we're using page.js or TSX as the actual page now. And so that gets applied to the directory name instead. Um, so we've got our page here. We're doing a, some, some stuff here in, in regards for like previews and stuff like that. So we're determining if it's a preview, we want to return the, you know, please log in page um, or check for authentication and so on. Uh, but other than that, we're we're literally just getting the post, we're getting the title, content, date, and returning that to the page. Um, so that's the basic part of it. Another cool thing I really like to show you guys is the authentication aspect. So um, so far in this app router project in our experimental package, we've got maybe five main helper utilities, and I can kind of show you that to you here. So we've got get client, which gets the authentic or gets the client to fetch data. We also have get auth client, which is essentially the same thing, but with your authentication tokens in place and everything. So you can request authenticated data through WP GraphQL. We've got a Faust route handler, which if you're familiar with Faust currently, it's essentially just an API router that handles the new um, kind of routing syntax in the app router support. And we've got two server actions on logout and on login, which we'll get to here shortly. These are another next concept server actions where you can actually um, create like a form in HTML and have that apply to a function in JavaScript that runs on the server. So we'll take a look at that here shortly as well. Um, so let's take a look at the login page uh, real quick before I go on any more questions just regarding to what we've seen so far. Cool. Sounds good. So let's go to my account. Um, you can see here, this is the my account page. And you can see here, we get a message, you must be authenticated, please log in first. So there's a way of determining if there's an authenticated user or not. And based on that, you can either, you know, return a new component that says, hey, you're not authenticated, please log in here. Or if they are authenticated, show the authenticated content. And essentially what that looks like is, <clears throat> since everything is async await, we have a request to get the auth client. And essentially this either returns the client or null. So if it doesn't return a client, it means there's no user authenticated and you can um, encourage them to log in or show an error message or something along those lines. So we try to get the auth client. 
it exists or it doesn't, we return them to the login page. If it does exist, now we know, hey, we've got an authenticated client, the user's logged in, let's make a request for authenticated data. And in this case, we're getting the, you know, the user and their posts and then displaying that here um, with a, with a logout button as well. So let's take a look then at our login page. Again, this is really bare. There's no styles here, but you get the picture. Um, username, or email, and password. So these are credentials for your WordPress site. So for instance, here, if I go to headless.local, I've got something uh, local running here. And my, you know, this is just a local instance. So it's pretty simple. My, you know, username and password, just admin and admin. And that logs me into WordPress. You know, this, again, this is just local, but that logs me in. I'm good to go. I can view posts, modify pages, and so on. And the same thing applies here. So if I use my WordPress credentials here to log in, I click log in, it's going to fire off a request to WP GraphQL. There's going to be an exchange, you know, validate that there's tokens available. If the tokens, we get a valid response for tokens, we apply that as a cookie in your browser. And now we're, you're authenticated, you're off to the races, you're good to go. Um, the great thing is this is again, saved on the browser and these authenticator requests are made server side. So you can see here um, in the network tab, you know, traditionally in Faust, all authenticator requests happen client side. Here you can see all of this data is returned straight from the server. So we have authentication server side. We're able to get all that data server side and return just HTML. So if you have certain SEO needs, this, this is kind of crucial. This is this could be super helpful. Um, so yeah, we could see here, uh, it shows my, my username here, my posts, post list, and then a logout button. So I'll show you real quick the logout because this is going back to the server actions part. And you can see this is actually going to be a net request. So um, let's first show you all what this logout button looks like. So we'll go to my page and my account. And you can see this is a form with a button and it's wrapped in this thing called an action. So next has this comp concept where any form properties, you can apply an action. And this is just a JavaScript function that executes some data on the server. Um, this on logout um, server action is a utility that we export from Faust. So you can see here, you can just import that from here. You can build your own. We just kind of do this for you. So this essentially, when I click the logout button, this removes the cookie, logs me out and re redirects me to the, to the home page or the same page that I'm on, but that will show that I'm not authenticated. So let's go ahead and log out here real quick. You can see it logs me out, removes my cookie, and then it brings me back to that same page, but says, hey, I'm not authenticated now, please log in. Um, one real quick thing I want to touch on too is just the login action. And then we can kind of go over to Frank because he's got a really in-depth example using this kind of stuff and it's really cool. So I'm excited for that. But I wanted to show you all a little bit more about those server actions and how they work because they're, they're pretty cool. They are experimental right now in Next. So currently Next app router is stable. The server actions are um, in experimental though. So we're playing with a lot of new cutting edge stuff. Um, so you can see here, this is a server action right here. This is for the login action. So what happens is we've got our, we've got our form here. We've got a username or email and password, and then a login button. You know, if you've built HTML forms before, this probably looks pretty similar to you, except we've got this, you know, action, login action here. So essentially what happens is behind the scenes is next, whenever you click submit, this login action, goes off and you can see you actually get an argument of form data. So this is just a typical form data implementation that you can get that data from, you know, if you do form data dot get, and then, you know, username, email, you'll actually get that value server side. So it's pretty helpful um, when you're kind of designing these forms, you can do it all server side without really a lot of state management. You can see here, we're not using use state um, to manage and on change events for password and username and email and so on. This it all just gets clear. sent to the server. And then we've got this on login form handler that logs you into Faust, gets you all set up. And then upon a uh, successful login, it redirects you to your My Account page. So it definitely uh, looks cleaner, Blake. Uh, the code, when the, you don't have a bunch of U state hooks <laughs> all over the place at the top, with um, David had a question, and I actually had the same question. So Great minds think alike, David. Are any parts of the auth lifecycle pluggable, Blake, or is all of it hard coded like the current Faust auth? 
Yeah. So hmm, that's a good question. And, and um, thanks David as well. I don't, for all of you that don't know, David also helped with that art with our RFC that we put out here. So yeah. appreciate your considerations there too. Um, so right now, the in terms of how Faust works with authentication, it's a little bit different than current Faust. In current Faust, we've got like all these all these different hand, um, hooks and stuff. Use auth is user authenticated, like all these other things that are essentially determining if a user is authenticated, how they're authenticating, and stuff like that. With the app router Faust, it's a little bit different. The only thing that we are hard coding is our two actions are on login and on logout. Um, those things relay directly to the Faust plugin on WordPress and will essentially generate like a token if you're getting the correct payload. So if you're providing the right user and a password, you're going to get a token back. If you're not, you're going to get an error message back. Um, and so it's still pluggable. I'd say if anything, the shift has, uh, you're kind of shifting your focus more to the WordPress side. If you wanted to modify like the kind of tokens you get back, the expiration and stuff like that, that's all kind of handled now in the WordPress plugin. Whereas on the Faust side, you're only getting the login action and on logout. So just to get those tokens and set them in the cookie, if that makes sense. Um, I can expand on that a little bit more um, if that didn't make sense either. But it is, I'd say it's a bit more pluggable than current Faust. We're still like working on making implementations though to where you can hook into for example like on login or on logout if you needed to um so i can use a plugin like headless login jvt authentication to manage a user session along with experimental toolbar and stuff um I'd, i might have to get back to you with that get back to you with that i think you should be able to you what, what might end up having to be is in our generate token logic on our wordpress plugin side you could you know have some filter that uses your own headless login or JWT authentication and return that token. And then from the Faust side, as long as that token's returned with a you know positive 200 response, you're good to go. That will save in your browser history and all that stuff and you'll be good to go. So um, that would be interesting. Um, I could PM you after this and we can kind of talk more about that because that would be a kind of a cool example or use case we could have in our examples directory if, um, you know, if we want to work on something like that. That would be cool. But I think um, I think that could work. We might need to add some filters to kind of make sure that you can return those proper tokens. Um, but but yeah, I think um, for the most part, like definitely much more pluggable than was current Faust, um, especially now just because we have these. It's really only like two or three concepts, like I said, on login and on logout from the Faust side, the JavaScript side. More of all that logic now has kind of been shifted to the the Faust plugin. Um, Got it. Um, another call out here too. Some of y'all might see these declarations for use server or use client. So this is another next concept um, in the app router that essentially allows you to determine like, hey, this component is supposed to be used specifically for the server or for the client. Um, if any of you have played around with app router stuff, you'll probably you've probably already ran into that because it can be kind of quirky at times. Um, but yeah, as Cran as Fran talked about earlier. If you're having interactive components or state managed components, you'll probably see a use client declaration at the top there just to kind of denote, hey, this client, this component is supposed to be ran on the client. So let's ship it to the bundle and um, not render it on the server. Like um, I actually had a quick question about the for for Apollo for support of Nexer. I, I'm not sure. I actually just joined their Discord, um, Apollo's Discord uh, a week ago, but are you have have you seen any notifications on when it actually will be stable? Because I know what we're using is all pretty much experimental, but on Apollo's and have you heard any news from them? Yeah, good question. Um, I haven't yet. So okay. um, just so you all know the our kind of logic to get an Apollo client and so on, we're essentially using a library under the hood as well that is also experimental. Um, and so, yeah, I haven't heard anything yet in terms of when that's supposed to go out of experimental state. Um, but as soon as it do, as soon as it does, we'll upgrade that within the Faust experimental package. And then from there we can determine like if, uh, if we're ready to leave experimental as well. And it's funny, just a little teaser y'all like, and, um, I'm going to have 
I'm going to get Lee Robinson, um, who's been on our podcast before, but he's the head of developer relations uh, at Vercel and does a lot of stuff with with Next 13. Um, we'll do some headless WordPress stuff, but it's it's interesting because as far as like how they moved from this their old paradigm to this, my question always is, and I think this will all depend on who's using what, but they'll they'll for sure Vercel will always like for a long time support next 12 and previous because obviously this is super new but i just wonder eventually blake uh what in the future if everybody just moves off of 12 and is just and Vercel doesn't support you know what i mean it will just always be next 13 moving forward but anyway yeah and i think their plan is like i said i'm not too sure but i believe their plan is to keep the pages router around for a while they're definitely going to support that yeah it had to have some time. time so yeah um uh let's see it looks like mark's got a question uh curious how sessions persist over time with this implementation um for example ensuring authentication is continually valid over time yeah mark that's a great question so um so we have two kind of cookies like it's a traditional refresh token and access token model and so the cookie that's saved in the browser is a refresh token, and it's valid from anywhere to be like two weeks or so, for example. The access token is a short-lived token. It's about five minutes, five to 10 minutes. Um, and so that's kind of how the session has persisted. If, for example, you're on a page for longer than, say, like five or 10 minutes, um, and that short-lived access token has expired, um, we're working on kicking off a server action that's going to have like a timer essentially built in that fetches a new access token with the refresh token. If in the case your short-lived token does expire during one session, um, however, that's not really likely. If you're navigating to no another page, um, you're going to get a new access token anyway. Um, but yeah, good good call out there. Any more questions? I dropped some links in the chat for y'all for all the information that we related to what we talked today and a little bit more information on just using raw next 13 with headless WordPress. I, I wrote a blog post about it and then I'm going to write about this too, um, with this repo. Uh, but what I, what I did here was first of all, I tried to pretend like I could CSS and this is the, <laughs> This is the Faust JS. This is what Blake just pulled up, except I just uh, CSSed it uh, using Tailwind. And I'm a bit of a Star Wars nerd, as y'all know. So I have all my Star Wars titles on the homepage being pulled by the Faust uh, Next 13 app support. And then I've got a layout here with Yoda's um, face here. And this is important because this is kind of like cool how uh, you can kind of like do nested layouts within different routes in Next 13. But I'm going to go ahead and use Faust's default login. I'm, I didn't have to code anything. Like Blake said, this just comes out of the package, which is super cool. I'm going to log in. And then this one is actually um, for Kellen. I'm a user named Franly the Manly here. And, <laughs> and here are my post titles and everything that are being pulled in from uh, from the, the uh, components that uh, comes off with Faust. Uh, but what I just wanted to show here is that number one, as you notice, now that I'm logged in, I had a nested layout with an authenticated user that shows Darth Vader's uh, picture up here, and it has a different nav bar. When I go to this um, draft a post, let's see, Kellen the Manly, which doesn't rhyme at all, but it's just an inside joke between Kellen and I, Kellen and Headless WP Rocks. I'm going to hit submit. This will fire off a WP GraphQL mutation on the server via um, actions uh, that Blake just talked about. And when I hit submit, it's going that actions file is going to revalidate the path, its cache, and then reroute us on the server to the drafts page to show that draft. So when I submit, it should, there it is. So it, I submit it, and then there's Kellen the Manly. Kellen and Headless WordPress rocks. These are drafted posts. Only authenticated users can author, and it should be jumped in my WordPress backend. And there it is. Um, let me just open the code here. So yeah, so essentially I just kind of added on 
piggybacking onto what Blake said, thanks for the uh, to Team Merlin that coding the hard stuff with the authentication on the server side because I, I would have taken me a way long time, a longer time to do it. But now you just kind of, I just kind of built on top of it where I have that create post um, component right here, and that's that form action component that Blake was talking about, which is down here within this my account um, route segment. And then that's where I'm using a, uh, the server uh, actions to create a graph, fire off a GraphQL mutation to fire off a drafted post in there. And then I just pull that in through this action equals add draft post where you can call that um, function. And as you can see, like he said, there is no state that I'm managing at all. The submit button, I copied this straight from the React docs. There's a experimental, where are you, submit button? Are you in my components there? There's an experimental use form status from React DOM. Um, and literally, this is off their docs where um, it handles this submit on the client for you. And then you can nest that into a default server component within that form. Um, anyway, that was the uh, demo I kind of built on. And I'm going to stop. Yeah, real quick, friend, I want to I want to mention something here while we're still seeing your code. Sure, um, sure. Some, something that I find really cool about these server actions is that Say, for instance, you have like a, um, you've got a form for a contact form and you've got a captcha on there, right? You've got like a client um, ID that goes with your captcha, then you have a secret key that usually you'll need like a, a back end endpoint to, to handle. With these server actions, since they are actually executed on the server and it's not a client side request, you have access to your secrets environment variables there. So you don't need to go off and create another REST API endpoint to actually kick off the form submission, all that kind of good stuff. You can actually just do it there right in the server action because you have access to all those secrets um, since it is server side. So that kind of helps remove some of the boilerplate. Um, you know, I've, I've personally seen in the past where you might have a REST endpoint or an API route in your next project just to handle one thing um versus you know having a server action that kind of does it all for you so another another little call out uh, for those server actions those will be really helpful when they get when they go uh um stable yeah and that's actually that was gonna i can ask lee directly but i think um i've been pestering him for the past two weeks about about uh, next 13 stuff so he might be annoyed with me but Blake, do you hear any mumblings in the dev community that this could probably be stable pretty soon, the server? Or is this way, way like later, maybe next year, late? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I, I I know they're still working on some things. Like if you go to their docs, they're still trying to figure out a few things around how to, for instance, like if you submit a form and there's errors, how do you get that error response back? So there's a few caveats there. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure how how much longer it's going to take, but they're definitely usable right now. I've used them in some certain use cases. You just got to be careful with kind of how you're using them, and if you, if yeah. there's a change coming, you probably won't be notified. So, um, but they're they're definitely fun to play around with. And I was going to say too, for anyone out there that is playing with this experimental work, experimental app router and stuff in Faust, please feel free to try anything out. If you run into an issue, it's it's probably not you. It's there's probably with the package. So feel free to create an issue, be active on GitHub, GitHub, and we'll we'll be happy to take a look into it. It's not me. It's not you. It's me, guys. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, David does have a question, Blake. Uh, how would one implement the template hierarchy? Oh, good question. Matching with Next thirteen, does app routing work alongside Faust client template routing? Example for routes that aren't explicitly defined. Let's see. Does app routing work alongside Faust client templates routing? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're we're we've got to take it in our backlog to look more deep into this. Currently, the experimental app router support that we have is only, um, you know, use client to fetch data, fetching authenticated data, our API handlers, and then our um, on login and on logout stuff. Um, we're so we're still trying to figure out how this works. It's a little bit different because traditionally. In next pages, you've got a you know one page, one JS page or TS page or what have you that is directly correlated to 
a URL or a page, you know, again, if I go to slash about, you know, that's going to be about.js in your next app. Whereas if in the app router, I go to slash about, it could be, you know, two or three layouts, the one page, it could be an error boundary as well. So we're kind of battling how that's going to look across, you know, sharing that um, template. So we're still working on it. We don't really have anything in progress right now. Um, but if you have any thoughts, we're happy to hear them. And um, like I said, we're probably going to be working on that like next sprint. So in a couple of weeks from now. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a that I think about. Blake, got anything else? If there's any, not any more questions, um, we can call it. But I do want to say thanks, y'all, for attending. I think, you know, as we kind of shift toward for React and Next users in Headless WordPress toward 13, I think it's just going to be important to stay aligned as a company um, what we're doing with the open source. So this is going to be, I think this is going to be really, really good. And I, I can't wait to see how that, uh, how you guys start matching like that template hierarchy, like David asked and everything. It's going to be, it's, I think it's going to be a good project. Um, there's another thing. Oh, uh, the other thing too, y'all, um, just some uh, notes there. Uh, next comp is tomorrow as well. So if you haven't registered, register, because they might be Mike dropping some news <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> you, you never yep. know. So you, you know what I'm saying? So it'll be um, it'll be good. Yep. All yeah, right. Thanks all for attending. I appreciate it. And like I said, if anyone has any more questions or anything, feel free to follow up. We're on GitHub and um, happy to answer any questions there. Yep. Welcome, Mark. All right, y'all. Until the next one, I'll see y'all later. Stoked for y'all. Cool. Bye.